Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in one minute. Cardiac output can increase markedly to meet the demands that we put on our body, whether dashing to catch a bus or riding a mountain bike. Your goals for learning are to recognize the cardiac output varies directly with heart rate and stroke volume, to identify physiological factors that modify heart rate and stroke volume, and to indicate how these factors change cardiac output. Here's what you need to know. Heart anatomy and the cardiac cycle. To see definitions of terms, click the bold red words. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped out by each ventricle in one minute and is directly affected by heart rate and stroke volume. Shown as an equation, cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Heart rate refers to the number of times the heart beats in one minute, averaging 75 beats per minute for an adult at rest. To see an animation of heart rate, click the heart illustration. Stroke volume refers to the amount of blood pumped by each ventricle with each heartbeat, averaging 70 milliliters per beat for an adult at rest. To see an animation of stroke volume, click the heart illustration. Stroke volume is the difference between end diastolic volume and end systolic volume. Here's how it works. By the time diastole ends, each ventricle has filled up with blood. This amount of blood is the end diastolic volume, or EDV. The amount of blood ejected during the systole is the stroke volume. At the end of systole, the volume of blood remaining in each ventricle is the end systolic volume, or ESV. For example, each ventricle normally contains about 120 milliliters of blood by the end of diastole. At the end of systole, about 50 milliliters of blood are left in each ventricle. This means that 70 milliliters of blood were pumped out of each ventricle during systole. To recap, cardiac output equals the heart rate times the stroke volume. The key factor regulating heart rate is the balance between sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation of the heart. Here's an exercise for you. Think about the effect increased sympathetic or parasympathetic input might have on heart rate. Then, click each of the choices to check your predictions.
Click the bar to see a video showing the effect of epinephrine on a frog heart. The key factor regulating stroke volume is the amount of stretching that occurs to ventricular cardiac muscle prior to ventricular contraction. The more cardiac muscle stretches, the more forcefully it contracts. These stronger contractions increase stroke volume. Here's an exercise for you. Think about the effect increased sympathetic or parasympathetic input or increased venous return might have on stroke volume. Then, click each of the choices to check your predictions. Heart rate and stroke volume often change in opposite directions because compensatory mechanisms attempt to maintain a constant cardiac output. Think about what would happen to heart rate and stroke volume if you suddenly lost a large amount of blood. Click the cardiac output bar to test your prediction. Here's a summary of what we've covered. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Heart rate increases with sympathetic nerve activity and epinephrine. Heart rate decreases with parasympathetic nerve activity. Stroke volume is increased by increased venous return, which results in greater stretching of cardiac muscle cells. Increased sympathetic nerve activity increases stroke volume by increasing contractility. To test your knowledge, click the quiz button to go to the self-quiz.